What's up guys, it's your boy Dorian here. So I went to go see Logan last night and you know I had to make a review about it. I know I haven't made videos in quite a while, but I had to come on and talk about Logan. I had to show him his respect, wearing my Deadpool jersey, but I had to come on and, and show Hugh Jackman my respect for his role. And the reason I haven't been making videos that often is because I've just been busy with work and school and uh, put a lot of my time into Geeks of Color and just building that and uh, expanding that with my team. So that's been a main priority, but I plan on doing videos at least once a week week or once every other week or something like that because I miss doing videos. So today I'm going to go ahead and do a spoiler free review of Logan and then at the end of the video, the last three or four minutes, I'll do a spoilerish review and just talk about some of the things that I really enjoy that I don't want to ruin for you guys if you haven't seen the movie. So yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I don't know. I don't know. Alright, so overall, this was easily Fox's best X-Men movie they've ever made. You look at this movie and then you look back at their other movies and you're like, how did this, how did they produce this? I'm not even trying to dog Fox, but this movie has just set the bar for, on so many levels. Like, after this, I expect nothing but greatness from them. Like, Apocalypse was garbage, kind of, and then they came out with this movie and it's just, it's wow, it's ridiculous. So I hope they keep this momentum. I don't think they can, but Jesus, this movie was fantastic. And I think part of the reason why this movie was so amazing was because we we knew this was gonna be uh, Hugh Jackman's last movie. And I remember the first time I saw him was with a little kid. I think I was like five or six and now I'm 21. So for him to be doing this role my whole entire life is just, my, he was my childhood, one of my first childhood heroes, so that's pretty dope, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I shed some tears throughout the movie because some of the scenes were just, just tear jerkers. The acting from everyone in the cast was uh, incredible. X-23 easily stole the show for me. She was amazing. Her action scenes, just her presence, her way she carried herself, incredible. It made me smile because she was funny, she was badass. I hope they invest more into her future, into this X-Men franchise because she deserves more roles and she deserves to be a hero or when she grows up a little bit more, I guess, to have her own movie or something like that because she was dope. And I'm, when I say she was dope, she was dope. It being rated R, they really had no limits on how gross and how gruesome it could get. It was just, whoosh, whoosh, she just, whoosh, 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 whoosh. that's the sound effects it made. But also it being rated R, we got to see a lot more cussing and the dynamic in the relationship between uh, Professor X and Logan. It was just incredible because it wasn't forced at all. Like we've, we've seen these two characters from the beginning interact and we've seen them interact through all these movies and they have each other's back. And Logan was basically taking care of Professor X throughout the movie because he was old as hell now. It was kind of sentimental because out of all the mutants, or out of all of uh, Professor X's mutants that he's taken care of and looked after, it happened to be Logan who was uh, the one by his side through thick and thin, the one he was, or the one taking care of him in the end. Where we met Logan at the beginning, this hothead animal who didn't give a F about anybody, and then we see him in the end, and he's over here taking care of Professor X, just having his back and doing whatever he needs to do to provide for Professor X, so that was pretty incredible to watch. The villain of the movie, he was a good villain. He, was, he had some funny moments, and I can't really say he was a bad or he was a like phenomenal villain because he was essential to the storyline but even though he was like part of the storyline it, it really wasn't Logan versus the villain it was Logan versus himself I guess overall just as a movie by itself I, I can't really like I don't have anything negative to say about it I just want to say thank you to Hugh Jackman for putting your heart and de dedicating not your life, but dedicating a lot of your time to this role. I mean, it's been a long, it's been 15, 16 years, I don't know how long, but he put a lot of time into this role and you could tell he really cared about it. And we all cared about Logan. This was a real high note for them. I'm so glad that they decided to go this route and the director did an amazing job with the screenwriting and the storyline felt like if The Last of Us met the X-Men, like this is The Last of Us just with mutants like involved. He is Joel and Laura is X-20, I mean Laura is, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Joe and, damn, what's that girl's name from from Last of Us? If you remember the girl's name from Last of Us, come, let me know because I, I'm blanking. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the spoiler free review. The cinematography was great, action scenes incredible, some of the best action I've ever seen in my life. And I thought I've seen great action scenes from John Wick too, but this was some of the best action ever. And again, like we've never seen the utilization of the claws like we have in this movie. I thought the Deadpool action was great because it was rated R, but this, they blew it out of the ballpark with this one. And I'm, I, I, again, it was amazing. So that's all I gotta say about that. If you're on the fence about the movie, 
just because you don't trust Fox or you don't you the you didn't really like the Wolverine movies in the past, go see this movie. This is an outstanding movie. Top comic one of the top comic book movies ever made. So go see it. And that's all I got for the spoiler free review. So if you have seen the movie, stick around for a couple more minutes. I'm gonna dive into some spoilers real quick, just talk about some some of the the things we gotta talk about, you know. And if you haven't seen the movie, you can go ahead and leave now and then come back after you see the movie, you can watch the rest of the spoiler free review. So I'm giving you like three or four seconds. Three, two, one, it's lit. Alright, so we're gonna talk about spoilers. So first off, I gotta go ahead and just say it. R.I.P. R.I.P. to my boy Logan and R.I.P. to my boy Patrick. Or why did I say Patrick? R.I.P. to my boy Professor X. And it was crazy because the clone, like, he was killed. Professor X was killed by a clone of Logan. Before we even talk about them dying, I knew that black family was going to die when when Logan and them started talking and everybody was happy for that moment in that house. I was like, damn, they are, they're dead because what I immediately got a flashback to X-Men Origins Wolverine. It was a crap movie, but Wolverine was still the goat in it. But when he was in that barn and he was being all friendly with those old people because he needed a jacket and stuff, and I knew as soon as they got all friendly, oop, bam, both those old people dead, got shot in the head or something. And then I immediately knew that was going to happen, so I was like, damn, at least keep the kid alive, please. Nope, he was the first one to die. Dude got gutted. In the last act, we finally got to see all the little kids that were, that they were experimenting on. And the only thing about that, that was one of my only, if I had to say, an issue was, how did all those kids manage to make it there and, and be all safe without anybody looking for them? If they had enough government or if they had enough backing to to put that much investment into Laura, wh where were the other security people for these other mutants? Like, was she just the only one that was important because she was the best or... I don't know because those other kids were strong as hell too. You got an Earthbender, you got an Avatar in there, somebody who was telekinetic, Static Shock. Those kids reminded me all of like some Mortal, like the Mortal Kombat. I don't know if he did that on purpose, but it kind of reminded me like each kid had a Mortal Kombat power. I don't know if I'm reaching on that, but one dude has Static Shock powers. I would say Raiden. Alina would be Laura because she got the knives and stuff, and then the one girl that was doing the win and she just tore that dude up in a tornado I would say that's Katana and there was a reptile looking dude so that's reptile and I don't know I'm reaching but I want to see what happens to those kids I would rather a movie focusing around those kids when they're a little bit older or just look like now like what's the next what's the next installment what's going to happen to them because I know this movie was set in 2029 and I, I really enjoyed the dynamic between Professor X and uh, and Laura and then when Professor X died it was kind of like Logan was taking care of Professor X, and then after Professor X died, Laura uh, had to take care of Logan. I was sad, uh, even though he died, like, Laura, they they got to connect, and they got to, that they had that, that father-daughter relationship, even though it wasn't long, it was a beautiful moment, and when he died at the end, he was like, oh, so this is what it feels like, and, I, and, and he meant to love, or to open himself up, and care about somebody else, and know what it feels like to die for somebody else. I, I don't know, something like that, but that's what he meant at the end. And I, I got real sad at that part because I was like, damn, he didn't even get to spend time with his daughter. And when Laura gave that speech at the end and she turned the, 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 the cross into the little X, I was like, oh man, no, don't do that to me, don't do it. And Laura's character, um, Daphne Keene, she didn't speak like halfway through the movie and then when she did speak, it was Spanish and a little bit of English, but I think she was a, she's a really great child actress. And I thought her silence was just as impactful as if she would have been speaking the whole time. One of the followers of Geeks of Color pointed out is that his journey, when we first met him, his journey began with a, a gifted mutant girl, Rogue, and then it ended with another mutant girl, his daughter. X-23, so I thought that was an incredible parallel. So in the comics that X-23 had throughout the uh, story when they were showing it a little bit, Rogue was one of the main characters in the story, so I thought they really were trying to push, push that parallel of first it was Rogue that, that we, we met him with and now it's X-23, so. When Logan did die, when he was fighting that uh, when X-24, when that dude, when the clone grabbed him with his claw and then threw him onto the wood spike and just like like this kind of reminded me of Batman vs Superman when Doomsday shanked the the hell out of Superman at the end he was like shank and so that kind of that's what it kind of reminded me of when he got stabbed in the end it was painful but I was like damn 
I think they, I don't know if they did that on purpose, like a reference to it. I don't, I don't know. I would, that'd be cool if they did that. And when you do go see it, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have seen it already, let me know what you think. Just try to keep spoilers out of it because if somebody else reads the comments and they haven't seen it, you don't want them spoiled or anything, all right? And, and next week I'll be posting a review of the Netflix show Iron Fist. I got to watch a little bit early, so I'm going to post a review about it, give you my thoughts and talk about it a little bit. So yeah, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Peace out. A-Town down. Chicago.